Okay, so ploidy is a difficult concept for a lot of people to grasp, but it's one of these things that's really going to make the difference between if you truly understand mitosis and meiosis or you do not. And ploidy has to do with the number of homologous chromosomes that are inside of an individual. So homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that are going to have the same genes but the alleles for those genes are not the same. And so homologous chromosomes are not the same thing as sister chromatids, first of all. These two chromosomes, for example, these could potentially be homologous chromosomes. These two portions are not the same thing. These are what we call sister chromatids. And the difference between these two items is that sister chromatids are exactly the same. Every single gene that you find on this side, you're gonna find an exact same copy over here. This is basically like a textbook, and then this is a Xerox copy of that exact same textbook. And so it's got the every single allele, let's imagine right here we have an allele that is a dominant allele. You're gonna find the exact same dominant allele over here on this side. So sister chromatids have got the same genes and the same alleles. Homologous chromosomes, on the other hand, they have all of the same genes. So whatever gene this is, in this case, it was a dominant allele, you're still gonna have that gene over here on this chromosome. The difference is that you will not necessarily have the same allele. And so we could have the same gene over here on this chromosome, but it might be the recessive allele. And since this is the sister chromatid to this side, you would have another copy over here on this side. So both of these might code for a trait like hair color or eye color or skin color, something like that but they could have different alleles on those two chromosomes. So the reason why they're significant is because they would be the same size. They would be uh, overall of equal importance because they have the same genes inside of them. And if you're talking about yourself, for example, you have got 46 chromosomes, and within those 46, you have 23 homologous pairs. And so what that means is I'm gonna draw my chromosomes with only one chromatid this time. That means if we were to line up all of your chromosomes, okay, and we were just to continue on the way down the line until we get to the final one, you would have 23 chromosomes that would contain all the genes that are necessary to build a human being. If you wanna know how many genes there are in a human being, you don't need to look at all 46 inside of your body. If you just wanna know how many genes there are, you really only need to look at 23, half of them. And then once you get to chromosome number 24, chromosome number 24 is going to be a homolog of one of these first 23. And so if we were to line up all your 46 chromosomes, there would be 23 homologous pairs. These guys would be homologous chromosomes. And again, that would mean that they have the same genes but different alleles. And we would go all the way down. And so those homologous pairs, the reason why they are there, because you might say, well, then why do I have two copies of every single gene? If you only need 23 to get all the genes that are necessary for a human being, then why do we have 46 in the first place? And the reason for that is because you have two parents. You got 23 chromosomes from your mom, and you got 23 chromosomes from your dad. And those 23 chromosomes that you got from each parent, they had all the information for every single trait inside of your body, but they had different alleles. So you are exactly 50% your mom and 50% your dad. And if you look at a sperm cell, for example, and this would be true for an egg cell also, we've got these 46 chromosomes, right? So we'd have uh, 23 over here and we have 23 over here, right? There'd be another 23 over there. And we have these homologous chromosomes that have the same genes and different alleles. So when we take these 46 and we divide them up to put 23 inside of a sperm cell, we don't just take like, let's imagine we've got, you know, all of these, these chromosomes lined up. It's not like we're just going to take the top group of homologous chromosomes, put those in a sperm, and then the bottom group of homologous chromosomes and put those in an egg. The reason why we wouldn't do that is because then inside of each of these sperms and eggs, you'd end up with two alleles, but for only half of the genes. Whereas you wanna get information for every single gene into every single one of these gametes. 
So if you look at a human sperm, it's going to have chromosomes, and there's going to be 23 of them, right? So we've got 23 total, but we haven't included homologous pairs. We have got one chromosome for each of those homologous pairs. And so if we look at a human sperm, it's going to have information for all of the genes, but it is only gonna have one allele for each one of those genes. So what that means is that even though you might look more like your mom or you might look more like your dad, you are exactly 50% your mom and 50% your dad because both your mom and your dad gave you information for every single gene in your body. And if they didn't, we would know that because you would either have extra chromosomes or be missing chromosomes, which has very significant consequences inside of human beings. So we got another example here, which is a strawberry. So strawberries are, uh, you know, they're plants, obviously, and plants can tolerate a whole bunch of chromosomes inside of their body. And strawberries in particular are hexaploid. And so hexaploid means that they're what we call 6N. So over here, we had 23 homologous pairs. We have two members of every single homologous chromosome. There's two homologous chromosomes in the individual. And so you are 2N, or diploid. If we're looking at one of your gametes, they've only got one member of every single homologous pair. They don't have these pairs inside of them at all. So you have one of each of those homologous pairs, which means it is only one N, because we have only one member of each of those homologous chromosomes. So we call this haploid. Well, a strawberry is 6N. And so this would be hexaploid. And so what that means is that we have got six members of every single group of homologous chromosomes. So that means if there's 42 total, there's six of each of those homologous chromosomes. So if you wanna know how many original chromosomes you had, it'd be 42 divided by six, which is seven. So that means in a strawberry, you've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of chromosomes. But for each one of these, that information has been duplicated six times. And so you're going to have six homologous chromosomes for every single one of these pairs. And that would be the same for all of these guys. And together, that is how you're gonna get your 42 total chromosomes. So if you are 2N, that means you have two homologous chromosomes in the individual. If you're 1N, that means you have only one chromosome for each of these homologous members, and there's nobody else there to really pair up with it. If you're something like triploid, or tetraploid, or pentaploid, or hexaploid, that tells you that there are three, four, five, or even six copies within every single one of these homologous chromosomes. And remember when I say copies, I mean copies of genes, but not necessarily copies of alleles.